Walker. And Dr. Walker, what is your um, educational background? Uh, I have a PhD in uh, history uh, from Duke University, uh, master's in Southern history from Johns Hopkins University, master's in African American history from Atlanta University, a bachelor's uh, BA degree in social science from uh, Clark College. And what college? Clark, Clark in Atlanta. And Dr. Walker, um, I want to talk just a little bit about your em employment history. Could you, um, w we've heard that you used to, that you worked at one time for the DeKalb County Schools. Prior to that, where did you work? Well, I was a history professor at uh, full professor at Clark College uh, in the Atlanta University Center. And prior to that, uh, I was a social studies teacher and coach in uh, Tonston, Georgia, Drake High School. Just for the records, so everybody know uh, we won two state championships down there. And I was <laughs> that. Is that in basketball? And I really want everybody to know. Uh, two weeks ago, 50 years after we won the state championship, they had a Drake High School Day, where they honored me as coach and my team. Still have some of my members living, thank God. And and that really was a great day during the midst of all these crowds. I was able to go to Tomston, not too far from Macon, right, right. to have a Tomston day with my home folks. And I just had to get that on the record. Thank okay. you. <laughs> and that was a basketball uh, championship, correct? Right. Okay. Two and um, when did you begin working for the DeKalb County School Board? I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, the DeKalb County School Board. In the 1980s. And I don't remember the exact date, so please don't trim me to that. And do you recall what your um, role was with the school board, school district? School district. I yes. started off as a uh, vice president of the Camp College, uh, and then became executive vice president of the Camp Technical College, and uh, then I began working closely with the superintendent, the associate superintendent in charge of uh, personnel and affirmative development for the Camp School System. And that was the position I held until I left the system. And what year did you leave the system? And and and, and uh, I think it was in nineteen in the nineties. Okay. And when you left the system, did you have a role in personnel? I was in charge of personnel. Now, uh, in addition to your your paid employment, uh, I want to talk a little bit about your prior political experience. Have you held uh, elected political office besides that of the school board? Yes. I served as a senator in the Georgia State Senate for 10 years. And did you represent DeKalb County? I represented the 41st District in the Sam County. And I held uh, leadership positions in the Georgia Senate. I was a majority whip first person of color to hold that position. And what year were you elected to the school board? In 2008. And other than serving as senator, have you held any other elected offices? No. And uh, your district in the cab, is it a um, you said it was a, a super district earlier. Could you explain what that means? Well, in the Camp County, we have uh, nine school board districts, uh, seven single districts, and two super districts, uh, eight and nine, what is so called super district. And the county is almost divided in half, and those two super districts cover a half a piece and the other uh, seven districts, uh, independent districts throughout the county. So is your uh, district similar to an at-large uh, district? Well, it was at-large for uh, District 9, yes. Okay. And uh, when you were elected in 2008, was it to fill um, the unexpired term of someone else? Right, a person who had been in the set, I mean, serving on the school board for a little better than 30 years, almost 30 years, uh, Miss Elizabeth Andrews. Mm -hmm. And uh, when did you seek re-election for that position? 
uh, in 2010. The remainder of her term was two years, and so I sought re-election in 2010. I mean, 2010. And when will you be up for re-election? 2014. So it's a four-year term. Yes, ma'am. Is that correct? Okay. Now, when you went on to the the Cab County School Board, um, were you elected to any positions? Uh. Right, I was elected uh, chair. And what year were you elected chair? Uh, this past year. So would that have been 2012? Yeah. So you served as chair um, <coughs> up until, did you serve as chair up until the time that you were removed from your position? No. No, uh, I had given up the chair position. I served as chair for one year. I sought re-election to chair and was re-elected, but I uh, resigned from chair. And when did you resign from chair? Uh, and, and I think it was in uh, December of last year. Mm -hmm. uh, January, January. January or February, I don't remember the exact date, but it was the beginning of this year, I think. Now, what were your relationships like with the other board members that you served with? Uh, Co-board members. We, we, we were all board members, and we got along, uh, and we represented the uh, students of the county and the areas in which we were elected from. And when you say that you all got along, are you familiar with the Sachs report <coughs> that states that um, the board was dysfunctional? Yeah, I, I, I don't quite know what they mean by dysfunctional. Were you all able to conduct uh, meetings on a regular basis? On a regular basis, we met uh, formally twice a month. We had a number of uh, committee meetings that I attended. We had committee of the whole meetings. Uh, we had a number of meetings. Uh, we voted and, and we put together a budget. Uh, we we uh, uh, had a, a, a smooth separation with the superintendent. We hired a new superintendent. Uh, we conducted, in my opinion, all of the business of the school system. So when you said dysfunctional, I do not know what you mean. And um, were, did, did, did you and the other board members, did you all agree on all issues? No, I don't know anybody agree on everything. And no, when you all disagreed on issues, um, how did you to express your disagreement? We, we, we had candid discussions. Uh, we were independent thinking people. We, we expressed our views as clearly and, 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 and precisely as we knew how, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, we would take a vote on an issue, and whichever way the vote turned out, that's the, that was the will of the board. Oh, now, one of the um, issues that has come up is the fact that you all um, did not elect a vice chair for the board. Uh, could you explain to us why that was? Well, because we did not get a, a large enough vote as we wanted to for the chair. And that was one of the reasons why I resigned. Uh, I have a policy in my own life uh, that you model or demonstrate the change you're seeking. And, and I wanted to try to be an example of trying to bring us together. And since I did not get as large a number of people to be chair as I felt I should have, I went ahead and resigned this chair and agreed to support whichever one of us could get the most votes. Mm -hmm. And that's how we got our new chair. Okay. And that new chair um, went into the position at what time? You're asking me the days and the months, and I don't okay. recall them, but what? it was this year. Oh, so it was in 2013, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, you mentioned that you and the board that you served with, that you all were able to hire a new superintendent. And I want to ask you first about the hiring of Cheryl Atkinson. Were you involved in that? Yes, yes I was. And um, the board that was removed along with you, were those members, or did any of those members um, 
Were they involved in the hiring of Ms. Atkinson? All but three, I think. Yeah. And how long did it take? No, no, the board that was removed? Yes. Yes, we're the ones who hired Ms. Atkinson. And how long did it take for you all to uh, hire, um, fill the position that Ms. Atkinson took? It took a pretty good while, but it took a long time for two reasons. Number one, we had what we thought was an excellent interim superintendent in place, receiving all kind of accolades about the work she was doing, and we were, th what I thought, making great progress with SACS, so much so that I would have preferred seeing her remain as superintendent. And number two, it was difficult for us to agree on uh, who the replacement would be, and we had to try and, and come up with a process for selecting the new superintendent, and we hired a professional company to help us come up with the framework and the guidelines and the kinds of questions we needed to ask, and, and we did a lot of surveys and received a lot of applications, and it took us a long time to arrive at somebody that we could get uh, a little bit better than a majority of the vote to hire. Mm -hmm. And when you say it was difficult to agree on a, re on a replacement, um, did, why, why was that, that you all couldn't agree on a replacement? I'll tell you for a number of things. Number one, some of us wanted uh, Mr. Ramona Tyson to remain superintendent, so we wasn't eager to hire someone else. Number two, it was difficult to find someone that we could get more than six votes to select, six out of nine votes to select as a superintendent. Mm -hmm. And we looked at a number of candidates from all over the country, I believe, and, and it was just difficult to achieve it. And we sought guidance and input from uh, Sachs and uh, the George School Board Association and all of the major players uh, and one's effort to hire a superintendent. Now, when you say you saw guidance from SATS, what involvement did they have in uh, help assisting you in finding a new superintendent? Just dialogue, no direction, simply dialogue. Do you know, have you heard of this person? Are there any real negatives we should be aware of? Uh, uh, are they uh, people who are accomplished enough for us to be considering them? Those type of things. Did you um, ask anyone at SACS about Cheryl Atkinson? Yes, uh, we, we, we asked uh, Dr. Elgott if he was wherever he knew her, and he had nothing negative to say about it. Mm -hmm. uh, did Dr. Elgard go as far as recommending Ms. Atkinson? No, no, no. <laughs> we wouldn't know. We didn't seek recommendations from SACS. We were just asking them if they were knowledgeable of these people. Um, so once, do you recall when Dr. Atkinson um, began working as the DeKalb County Superintendent? You keep asking me specific dates, and I don't remember the specific date that uh, she came. It's, it's on the record. We, we, uh, we, uh, but, but we, it's September the 15th, I think. Okay. Kelsey, you may be too young to... Recognize. <laughs> <laughs> but I assure you, I'm old enough to understand what you're talking about. Okay. It was September the 15th, I think. I, I got that one. Okay. And I'm going to ask you to turn to uh, Petitioner's Exhibit 36, which is uh, part of the uh, uh, exhibit binder in front of you. And, uh, Your Honor, as an aside, uh, I did talk with the state, and we have come up with a list of exhibits uh, we're willing to stipulate that the petitioner has proposed, and 36 is one of those. Okay. Very good. You say on the tab 36? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Now, does this help you recall when um, Ms. Atkinson was hired by the school board? Right. Yeah, we, we hired her uh, on, I think, September 15th. Okay. And in this email, she refers to, um, you know, 15 days. What is that in refer reference to? She's been on the job uh, for 15 days. And, uh, and, and she was off and running, and we, we felt very strong. We've done some positive things, and and she 
had total control of, of all personnel matters, and she made some immediate changes, and she was just informing the board. Uh, the changes that are referred to in this email, um, she talks about a, quite a few changes in um, reporting, the reporting structure. Did she discuss the changes with you prior to implementing the changes? No, not a one. Um, did you have any role in the organizational changes that she made? No, I did not. Did you expect her to consult with you about any of the changes? I would have appreciated it. Uh, but, and the fact that she didn't consult with you, was that a problem in your in working with her going forward? No, it was not a problem. I, I, I wanted to make sure that she did what she thought was best for the system. She was a superintendent, and I wanted to support her, which I did. And when Dr. Atkinson uh, began her new role, uh, did she hire people to come in and provide her with advice? She had a number of consultants. And uh, did you all approve the hire? Were you all required to approve the hiring of the consultants? Not unless the expense exceeds hundred thousand dollars. And do you know if that ever happened in regards to any of the consultants she hired? It did. And did you all approve the consultants um, um, that she? Did you all approve paying them over hundred thousand dollars? We did. And why did you approve it? We had confidence in our superintendent and supported her recommendations. Now the consultants that she hired had they been budgeted for? in your, um, your, the budget that was in place when she was hired? No, not a one. Um, so when she came into uh, her position in 2011, there, was there an existing budget? Yes. Now, are you familiar or do you understand what a balanced budget is? Very much so, ma'am. And other than your work on the DeKalb County School Board, have you worked with any entities that required you to uh, balance a budget? Yes, ma'am. You asked uh, about my positions and, and the ones that I were elected to, but you did not ask about the ones I was appointed to. Uh, I was appointed by Governor Miller to serve as uh, Commissioner of Juvenile Justice for the State of Georgia. And I was also appointed by Governor Roy Barnes to serve on state board of pardons and parole. And in each one of these positions, uh, they were uh, heads of uh, governmental agencies for the most part. So we had to balance the budget, uh, most specifically the Department of Justice. And there was a group of us in the board of pardons and parole, but we had to balance state budgets. So I'm very familiar with uh, state budgets and, and governmental budgets and how they're supposed to be balanced. No. Um during the time that you came onto the DeKalb County School Board in 2008 uh, through uh, 2011, were you and your other board members able to uh, pass a budget for the school district? Yes, ma'am. And did y'all do that on a yearly basis? Yes, ma'am. Were you and your other school board members able to um, uh, operate without a deficit at the end of the year? We felt we did, yes. And um, were you all able to have a fund balance at the end of each year? Each year that I was on the board, yes, ma'am. Now, the unbudgeted spending that you mentioned in the form of the consultants, in addition to that spending, was there any other unbudgeted spending that happened as a result of a new superintendent? Yes, we, we were. She, she made a number of personnel changes she felt need to be made, and a number of these persons that uh, she uh, decided to replace could not be terminated because they won contracts. So they had to remain in the positions they were in, plus the people that she brought in. So we were in some instances playing a double salary for the same kind of work, with one person working and another one doing some other kind of work until that contract expired. Um, are you, and I would like to direct your attention to um, the SACS report from October of 2012, and I believe that's Exhibit 24 and the petitioner's exhibit. 
And Your Honor, that is another exhibit that the parties have stipulated to be admitted. Okay. It's not under this one. Yes. Okay. Dr. Walker, I'm going to ask you to look at page uh, six of the um, of the uh, Sachs report from October 12th, or from October 2012. Now, are you familiar with that report? Yes, I am. And if you would go about um, halfway down the page in this report, there is a quote that's attributed to you. All right. And if you take a look at that, I just want to ask you a question or two about that. But we have a balanced budget? Yes. yes and so you are quoted um, in this report as saying, uh, would you read what the quote says, please? Yeah, I'll read to two sentences. There's more than one. Can I read sentence before that then? Yes, and I'll go ahead and read it. I found the, the document. It says that when asked about the potential negative... Your, your Honor, I don't mind the witness, but I think it's inappropriate that counsel will testify. <laughs> that, that's fine, Your Honor. Mr. Where, uh, where are you again? What page? Oh, I'm sorry, on page 6, Your Honor, of on six the section of, B. 6 of 31? No, I'm sorry, 6 of 24. Exhibit 24, you mean? Yes, sir, Exhibit 24. All right, I've got Exhibit 24, which is the March 2012. No, it should be... It's the same thing as Respondent's Exhibit, or State's Exhibit 5. Right, it's the advance ed report dated October 2012, okay. Your Honor. Yes. All right. You have accidentally <laughs> inserted the March 2012. Oh, okay, I'm sorry about okay. that. Which, which one is in the state side? Number 5, Your Honor. All right, I'm, I'm with you now. Page 6. Yes, sir. All right. And we are under uh, Section B, the second paragraph under Section B. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Walker, would you read um, out loud for us what the what, what it, the quote in the sentence before that you're quoted in that uh, paragraph? The board chair did not differentiate between having a balanced budget and operating the system in a manner that adheres to said budget. When asked about the potential negative balance in the general fund, the response by the board chair was simply, but we have a balanced budget. Now, um, did you make that statement as quoted in this report? I made that precise statement and I added some more, but I don't see the other part I added. Okay. And what was the other part that you added? I, I was very specific and meticulous in explaining to the person talking to me that we had just balanced the budget and approved it. But two weeks after we balanced the budget, the superintendent came to us and told us because the attrition rate had not gone like she projected, we are going to have to have a deficit in our budget. And, and we had some serious discussion about that. And she said, in order to uh, come up with the deficit money, we're going to have to have a reduction in force. And, 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 and the board members, uh, me in particular, uh, did not uh, uh, agree to that line of reasoning. And, and we went into great detail trying to explain it. But we had approved a balanced budget. But two weeks after the budget was approved and it was balanced, the superintendent came back and said based on the attrition rate not being what she thought it would be, we would have a deficit budget that year. So that's how that came about. Okay. And it's unfortunate that uh, I don't see that explanation either. Okay. So did you, um, in fact, uh, were you so basically were you in fact able to differentiate between having a balanced budget and operating the system in a manner that adheres to the budget? 
I tried to explain to that group as well that we did a lot of, we had a lot of expenditures that had not been budgeted for. For example, the number of consultants. An example, too, of paying uh, two people for the one position that they should have had. So all of this meant that we had uh, spent over what we had budgeted. So the, 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 the frustrating part is that people don't seem to see with clarity and understand that the difference between the board and the administration. Uh, the administration is the group that expend the money. The board is the group that sign off on it. And we sign off as a result of the recommendations of the administration. And we had a board that tried as best it could to cooperate and support the superintendent to the extent that we did not inhibit her from spending money that we did not have budget. Mm -hmm. and, um, but it was the administration, not the board, spending the money. Okay. And what were you told about the reasons why it was necessary for the superintendent to spend these sum unbudgeted sums? That they needed to get consultants to help assess different... Objection, Your Honor. He hasn't laid a foundation for where he's pulling this from. He appears to be providing testimony of witnesses who weren't actually present. What was the question again? Um, uh, the question is, what was he told um, about why the superintendent needed to uh, spend, spend these unbudgeted amounts? Uh, let's rephrase that uh, okay. to what was his understanding of why. Okay. So, Mr. Walker, what was your understanding of why the superintendent needed to spend these um, um, unbudgeted amounts? She needed to make these moves to implement and carry out uh, her program and her new direction, new vision. Okay. Um, now, prior to 2012, had the DeKalb County School District um, in the year with a deficit? We had ended each year with a fund balance. In fact, the year before this, we ended a fund balance with some $58 million. And some 37 of that $58 million was used to compensate uh, uh, the county for the furlough days that, that we had uh, given our teachers and used federal money for. So, so we almost had 16 to 17 million dollars left after doing that. So we did have a fund balance. Okay. Now, did you serve on the budget committee as a school board member? Yes, ma'am. And uh, did the as a member of the budget committee, did you uh, what was your role? When I served on the budget committee prior to the year I became chair. Once you become chair, you don't serve on committees. You ad hoc members. But during the time I was on the budget committee, uh, we worked along with the chief financial officer and the superintendent in putting the budget together that we recommended uh, brought forth to the uh, whole board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I'd like to ask you another question about the... Um, about Exhibit uh, 25, which is SAC's report. And, Your Honor, if you don't mind, I would like to exchange exhibits with him. He only has one page. Sure. So I'd like to make sure he has, just go ahead and give him the entire report. And this is your 25 now? Yes, it is. I'm sorry, it's my 24, Your Honor. I keep getting the numbers mixed up, but it's my 24. Okay. And the, the state's the, the number five. Right, the October um, SACS report. Yes, it's the October SACS report. That's correct. I thought that's what we were just looking at. That's what we were just looking at, just okay. a different page that we're okay. going to. Okay, all righty. Uh, Dr. Walker, in the SACS report, it um, talks about a claim <coughs> and that there was an unaudited deficit incurred by the school district for 2012 of more than $24 million. Did you ever hear that claim? Yes. Yeah. And w w tell me how you heard that claim and, and um, how you became aware of that. 
Uh, that that was the, and the number went from 15 million to 25 million. It, it depends on what time you heard it. And this was the amount of money that the superintendent, that the administration was uh, saying uh, we would have a deficit on. Um, and did that number come for, from Dr. Atkinson? The administration, yes. And did that cause you concern to hear yes. that? Yes, yes. Um, and did, the, did you take any actions to see if they could be rectified? Yes, I did. I uh, spoke to the superintendent, and I always spoke to the superintendent. Uh, we had a, a difference of opinion about reduction in force, and uh, we had that difference of opinion for basically two reasons. Number one, we had already uh, given contracts to our employees, and I didn't think it would be prudent or uh, wise for us to then come around and tell them we were going to have to terminate them. Uh, but more important than that, I knew that we were having a greater level of attrition, given my experience in the area of personnel, than, than they said was coming. I knew that we would have uh, in excess of 300 people leaving the system. And given that fact, we would be able to place some of those individuals with a uh, certificate rather than laying them all, who were certified, into some of the positions that people were leaving, and then we could hire uh, people at the state salary level uh, for the uh, 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 state pay that uh, they said they were going to start using uh, to pay new persons who were coming into the pre-K program. So it was in two areas that we worried about. Okay. And I want to direct your attention to page 13 of the SACS report, and it's uh, on the indicator 4.2, um, paragraph 8. And I'd like for you to read the last two sentences of this report. Dr. Walker, do you see where it says evidence from documentation and interviews? I'm not aware of that kind of evidence. Okay, so would you just read the, the sentence, what, what it says? Can we read it aloud? Yes, sir. Evidence from documentation and interviews clearly demonstrate that board members knowingly developed budgets that overrepresented revenues and underrepresented or did not sufficiently account for expenses. Now, um, would you agree with that statement in this report? No, ma'am. And why would you disagree? <coughs> Number one, the board members are not the ones who put the budget together. It's the staff. That's the first mistake. <coughs> and secondly, we, we did not come up with budgets that overrepresented revenues and underrepresented or sufficient, uh, insufficiently accounted for expenses. One of the key things we kept our eyes on and, and we always tried to budget under that, but the amount of revenues we would be getting from both the state and from our local tax. And we were experiencing severe difficulties with revenues. As you are aware that through austerity budgeting, we always, we were getting for the past five years at the release, 25% less of what we earn. 25% less of what we earn. For example, if we had earned $100,000, we would only get $75,000 of that. Likewise, we were experiencing a significant drop in the value of our local property base. Uh, we, we, in the last five years, one mill would bring in, we'll say, $17 million, $17 million, and currently one mill would bring in about 14 and a half or $15 million. So you have this big drop in revenue. We were acutely aware of these things. And, and being aware of those, we, we, we always tried to budget under the revenue side. Now, um, at, at some point back in January of 2011, did SACS come in and do some type of review of the DeKalb County school system? 
And, and um, did SACS communicate to you all that they had some areas of concern regarding the school system? In the March report that they made, uh, they expressed whatever concerns they had and put some required action, recommended some required actions. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to direct your attention to the petitioner's exhibit number 26. It's not in this one. The exhibit is not there? Okay. I'll get you one. Now, you refer, is this the report that you're referring to as the March report? No. Um, and the dates on this report, the he review. said no. Okay, then I'm just going to ask him another question to try okay. to clarify that. All right. The so review like... dates on this report are January 24th to 26th, 2011. Right. Do you know what those dates represent? Not all. Okay. Um, if you uh, take a quick look at this report, and at the bottom of the page one, it says special review team report. It's look at just what you just gave? Yes, at the very bottom in the left Corner. Special review team report. Okay. And do you recall, does that help you recall uh, that SACS came to the DeKalb County School System in January of 2011 to interview <coughs> individuals? I, I don't doubt that coming, but I'm not familiar with it. Okay. And if you would take a look at the report, um, if you would briefly look at that and see if it helps refresh your recollection regarding what happened when uh, Sachs came um, to the DeKalb County School District in January of 2011. So if you just look at the report that you have before you. This is when uh, Ms. Tyson was the interim superintendent. Okay. And, and she was working very closely uh, with Sachs and the board to answer whatever concern Sachs had. Okay. So uh, this is something that uh, I was very supportive of, and we gave whatever assistance and support and provided whatever resources were needed uh, to try to accommodate this one. Well, do you recall that uh, whether if as a result of this review, uh, Sachs placed the district on accredited advisement? I, 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 I guess this is the one, yes. Okay. After the district was placed on accredited advisement, what steps did you take to um, try to get the district out of accredited advisement? Well, to start working with whatever the SACS committee recommended us to do and and was counting on uh, uh, Ms. Tyson to uh, help do the research and help us identify uh, both the individuals and the resources necessary to answer the kind of questions and and and, and, and do the kind of work that SAC said we should uh, do. Now if you would turn to page five of this report it lists uh, several standards, advanced ed standards. reflected on this page uh, several standards that Advance Ed or SACS has uh, outlined. Yeah. Um, was it your understanding that these particular standards were the ones where SACS, as of the date of this report, had concerns? Well, yes. And 
um, did any of the areas of concern as of March of 2011 involve leadership and governance of the school board? Yes, they Sachs made its report in March, and and they rated us on the seven standards. And as I recall, we received met on four and emerging on three. And do you recall which ones you met? I, I, I could do it better if I saw the March 12 report before me. I don't have that March 12 report. Okay, so the report that you have, there's a cover letter that came with the report and it's dated March 3rd, 2011. What, what, what report, I'm sorry? The report that you're looking at now that has the January 2011 date on the review dates on the front. There's a cover letter that sits, that's dated March 3rd, 2011 to Ramona Tyson. Yes. Do you have a copy of that with your documents? I'm looking at the letter. Okay. So does this help refresh your recollection regarding um, how this particular letter came about and this report came about? Yes. Okay. And what do you recall about it? That we want advisement and, and we have to work to try to come off of it. And did any of the required actions in this report re have anything to do with leadership and governance? Yes. Which one? So if you go to page uh, 11 of the report, it starts to list some of the required actions. Okay. I'm, I'm on page 11. What is it you're requesting? So does... Do you see any of the required actions that deal with leadership of governance? No, I do not. Okay. So as of March of 2011, did you have any notice that Sachs Group had any concerns about leadership or governance um, within the district? No, I don't. I don't. Okay. Um, so was there a subsequent review conducted by Sachs? of the district. From January. I'm not familiar with those. The one I'm familiar with is the report Sachs made in March. Okay, if you turn to exhibit number 25. That's the one I'm familiar with. I don't know that about it. Okay. Okay, so you're familiar and uh, the report that's uh, dated um, March 25, do you know if this was an update report or what type of report this was? It was a report made by the uh, uh, Quality Assurance Review Team of Science. So this, was this in their regular course of evaluating you all for accreditation? Yes, ma'am. And uh, what does the March 2012 report say? It's not in this thing, not in this book. Okay, do you recall if you received any commendations as a result of the March 2012 report? <clears throat> we received a number of accommodations. <clears throat> do you recall specifically what areas you may have received accommodations in? No, I do not. Don't remember. Okay, I'm going to hand you what is Exhibit 25 and see if that helps refresh your recollection. This is the report I was talking about. Okay. And in that report, did Sachs give you any commendations? Yes, ma'am. And what type of commendations did it give you? It gave the system commendations in a lot of areas. Uh, 
It commanded the superintendent. Uh, it commanded the uh, uh, staff. It commanded the school for its communication. It commanded the school for institutionalizing and monitoring a variety of assessment uh, activities. So these are the kind of accommodations that's listed in this report. In addition to the ones you mentioned, do you know if they commended the Board of Education for supporting the superintendent? Yes, ma'am. They commended the board for supporting the superintendent. Okay. Now, um, at the conclusion of this uh, quality assurance team review, did they um, give you any required actions that they wanted you to work on? Yes, ma'am. And do you recall any of those, um, do you recall what any of those required actions were? They're all listed here, but uh, none are in the area of finance, uh, that's what I can see. Here. Okay. And when you received the list of required actions, did you as a board member take any steps to ensure that the district was able to respond to uh, SACS? Right. We, we requested the superintendent to have the person in charge of that area start putting together documents and, and a response. When Sachs told you in this uh, March 2012 report and then other reports that there were actions that you needed to take as a board, uh, did you resist responding or doing what they suggested you do? No, ma'am. What was your response when they told you uh, you needed to take particular actions? Uh, to report to the superintendent and ask her what could the board do. Now, as a board member, um, who were you permitted to communicate with about actions you wanted to see within the district? Ms. Tyson. And Ms. Tyson, what was her role at that time? She was the person uh, in charge of gathering whatever information we needed in order to respond to science. And um, once the church, Ms. Atkinson became the superintendent, did you then begin communicating with her? Yes. Did you ever have direct communication with staff members about things you wanted them to do? No. And were you aware of the district's chain of command policy? Yes. Did you adhere to that policy? Yes, ma'am. Now, when you all received the report in March of 2012, was the district on advisement accreditation at that time? Yes, ma'am. And do you know what the different levels are of accreditation? Yes, ma'am. What are they? Advisement, warning, probation, <clears throat> And, and a loss of uh, accreditation. And after SACS placed you on advisement, did you have conversation with the folks at SACS about what you needed to do in order to ensure the district came off of that? Yes, we met with uh, Mr. Uh, Elgar. And when you say you met with Mr. Elgar, what type of meetings did you have? Um, some members of the board, and we went to his office, he called us down, we met with him, the superintendent was there, all of the board members were not there, uh, we just had a few of the board members there, and, and we discussed his uh, uh, placing us uh, with the status uh, that we want. And did you ever have any type of mediation sessions with um, Mr. Elgar? Any kind of what? Mediation sessions? Yes, ma'am. And, and what uh, did those involve? Those were occasions where we discussed ways in which we could improve our communication, how we could uh, develop uh, trust and better respect for each other as board members. Uh, on one occasion, he even shared with us uh, some experience he had had observing some TED Talks and how that might uh, benefit us to some degree. And did you find those sessions with him helpful? Uh, we enjoyed the sessions. Yeah, we had, we had a good conversation. So did you willingly participate in the sessions? Yes, ma'am. Now, I want to direct you to what is um, 
in the exhibit binder is exhibit number 39. receiving this particular letter from um, uh, Sachs. Uh, the, the letter dated August 28th? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And so this letter that's dated August 28th is addressed to the superintendent Atkinson. Um, and so that does that mean she was the superintendent at that time? Yes, she was already in her position. Now, uh, what did this letter inform you of? To my surprise, he was telling me that he had received numerous complaints containing a number of allegations that we were in violation of the accreditation standards of SACS. And when you say to your surprise, um, had you had any conversations with anyone in the, in the administration or anyone from SACS that they were receiving complaints? about the, the, the school board or the school system? Not from SACS or anybody in the administration. No, we were working on what I thought were issues involved in the school system. And at this time, back in August of 2012, what was your relationship like with Dr. Atkinson? We were, she worked for me. She was our superintendent. so. We had a working relationship. Were you still supportive of her, um, her, the direction she was taking the school board? For the most part, yes. I just had some questions about some items. And uh, one of the questions you had for her, did it involve the, the purchases she was making um, for less than um, $100,000? That's correct. And would you explain to um, the judge why you had questions and concerns about that? In, in January, uh, the school board up the amount of money the superintendent could uh, spend without getting board permission uh, from fifty to hundred thousand dollars. And in March of that year, uh, we we passed a, a policy whereby uh, to ensure greater transparency and to make certain that uh, tax dollars were spent for educational purposes, that the superintendent share with the board for information only uh, who those individuals are, were, and, and who approved it. That was the, we already had a framework primarily for making a report. We just added on there, we wanted to know who approved it, make certain we know who approved uh, the outlays of these funds because superintendent may have designated somebody. We wanted to know who that was uh, for the sake of compliance. So, and, and around the end of June and 1st of July, we had passed the policy in March, but we had not received that report. So after we passed the budget, I wrote to superintendent and asked the superintendent to start uh, providing that information for us because we were getting a lot of questions from the people in the community about who we had as consultants and how much we were paying them and a whole lot of rumors that uh, I didn't think had any merit but I at least wanted to get the data so that I could uh, be accurate in my response to them. So we asked the superintendent to provide that information at the, the March policy uh, suggested we said we should have and initially I thought the information would be forthcoming uh, but after about a month of corresponding uh, she informed us that uh, uh, the uh, computers that we had your honor I'm going to object he's testifying as to what superintendent told him well that would be hearsay um, you can avoid hearsay. Your Honor, I would say it, it would be an exception to the hearsay rule in that he's not um, testifying as to the truth of it, but as to what effect it had on him and what actions he took as a result of the information. Mm. 
Let me hear the question again. Um, I started this. <laughs> the question was, um, did you, oh, why did you um, ask Dr. Atkinson for information uh, regarding purchases of $100,000 or less? I believe that was the original question, but I'll move on. Maybe I can help if he needs to cite hearsay to explain that, I'll, I'll overrule the objection. That would explain why he's doing that. So, okay. yeah, not for the truth of the matter asserted, but to explain his uh, his mental direction and his actions. Okay, you can go on, Dr. Walker. So she she explained in order to provide the information being requested, which the policy called for policy that had uh, sit on the table for some 30 days and I was unaware of it causing the kind of problems that was now being brought to me. Uh, she was saying that she would have to have, uh, to do it manually, it would require six or 12 more individuals or a large sum of money. And if we had to do it uh, tech now, uh, electronically, we would have to come up with a new computer system. And that would call Fifteen or twenty million dollars, and 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 I then uh, urged her to go ahead and, and and present the information to us uh, the way she had been presenting it to other uh, state agencies, and 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 the way she had put it on the website, and uh, and that's where we left. And were you asking her to comply with the board policy DJE? Yes, ma'am. And that's the policy that you heard earlier being admitted into the record at Exhibit 20? Yes, ma'am. Now, the conversation that you started with Dr. Atkinson, was it via email? Yes, ma'am. And if you would turn to Exhibit 1 in your binder, would you look at the first page of that email uh, of the document? Now, would you tell me, is that the initial email that you sent to Dr. Atkinson asking her to comply with policy DJE? That's correct. Now, on the second page of, um, of this document, there is a uh, response that appears to be highlighted uh, at the bottom of the page. Was that part the response you received from Dr. Atkinson? Yes. Um, is, is this the complete response that you received, or, or was there more information that came with this particular response? There was more information. Okay. Uh, and that does not appear to be part of this report, correct? I don't see it. Do you recall what Dr. Atkinson, uh, you just explained that Dr. Atkinson told you that she would not be able to provide the information. She'd need additional staff and technology in order to comply. Is that what she told you initially? No, this is uh, that's, that's a pretty good ways down the line before I heard that the, right here in, in the third uh, response. Uh, Your Honor, I'm going to reiterate my objection to the hearsay. He's explained what his actions were based on the latitude that you've mm -hmm. given him before, but at this point, if we're going to get into a series of where he's just testifying as to what Dr. Atkinson said, um, I think that crosses the line. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll move on. When, once you received a response from Dr. Atkinson, did you continue to ask for the information? Yes. Was it ever forthcoming? No. The information you requested from Dr. Atkinson, was it consistent with the policy that the uh, board had adopted in March of 2012? Yes, ma'am. Was Dr. Atkinson the superintendent in March of 2012? Yes, ma'am. Was she aware of the policy that was being uh, adopted by the board? Her staff proposed. So the policy itself came from Dr. Atkinson? From the administration. From the administration. Did she have an uh, opportunity to um, ask for any changes to the document? It was on the table for 30 days. Okay. Um, there are several additional uh, emails from you to Dr. Atkinson on this particular issue. Did you continue to correspond with her in order to obtain this information? Yes, ma'am. Uh, if you would look at the, the next page of emails beginning at page 3 through 6 or through 5, are those the, the emails that you sent to Dr. Atkinson? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
So, Yana, we'd like to ask that these um, documents be admitted into the record. What's uh, your exhibit number? It's exhibit one. Any objection? Yes, Your Honor. This is not something to be stipulated to. Uh, if Your Honor will look at the exhibits, these are portions of emails. Um, in many cases, the printout will show page four of four, page one of three, page one of three, page one of four, uh, page one of four, page one of six, page one of six, page one of two, page one of seven. It's not a complete record. In addition, it also contains uh, the hearsay from Dr. Atkinson, which uh, has not been testified to and which Dr. Walker cannot authenticate or at least proffer in as viable evidence going forward. You have partial responses. He admitted as much when inquiring, when petitioner's counsel asked him about the uh, email that begins on page two, which is at the top, page one of three, Ray Perens 2, request for reports of all purchases under $100,000. It has the portion of the first paragraph of her email to Dr. Walker, so we would object that it is an incomplete record, that it contains an invisible hearsay. Your Honor, I would ask that as far as the, the emails are concerned, that those portions of the email that are from Dr. Walker to Dr. Atkinson be admitted. He's testified that those were the emails that he sent to her. Um, Separately, we have his testimony regarding uh, what happened after he sent them, but to the extent that he has testified and identified these emails as ones he actually sent, I would ask that that be admitted and we can redact the document to exclude the information that came from um, Ms. Atkinson. Is that actually no, Your Honor, because at that point, if he, all he's doing is admitting his emails, it's uh, bolstered improper bolstering of his testimony. But in addition, there are numerous emails that only contain Dr. Walker's language, but there is no sign-off line at the end. It may very well be, and I'll get this side as an example, Ray 5, request for reports for all purchases under $100,000. I'm goes, sorry, what page are you referring to? This is page 1 of 6, Ray Perens 5, request for reports for all purchases under $100,000. It goes to the bottom of the page. There is no second page. It's listed as page 1 of 6. And there's no indication that it's the entire email from Dr. Walker. Um, I believe I provided the state with an updated exhibit one. And I think what this you're referring to. This is the updated exhibit one. Okay. So what I have is slightly different. This is page one. I don't know. I'm saying it. Well, Mr. Wheeler is looking at that, Council. Uh, how much longer do you anticipate the direct examination, um, Dr. I think we're about halfway done. Halfway done? Yes, sir. Statute requires a decision in 90 days. <laughs> I certainly don't expect to be here that long. All right, I'd like to get, uh, uh, while we were in a bit of a pause, I'd like to find out about our um, um, subpoena issue. I, I've noticed Mr. Brock out in the uh, hallway. Okay, why don't you ask him to come on in, please, ma'am. I don't want them staying here any longer than they have to. They've been here all day. Do you want us to finish up Dr. Walker today? Um, we'll talk about that. Let's let's uh, let's deal with the uh, the uh, subpoena the issue and see if we can release uh, Mr. Brock and company. Mr. Brock, are you Mr. Brock? No. Oh, I'm sorry. I read the wrong names. Okay. All right. Where are we on the? Uh, 
uh, trying to, to uh, deal with the uh, request. As, as we stated uh, through uh, the AG's office, we, uh, we don't have anybody in the office. We all were at the seminar from Friday to okay. now, and Dr. Elgar and I have been down here on subpoena. Okay. We cannot probably get to it until first thing in the morning. So all right. We do not believe that there uh, is a, a great deal of information in there that they're seeking that would meet that request, however. I would not be surprised at that. Um, uh, I hate I hate you guys hanging around any longer. Um, by the same token, let's deal with uh, uh, how long we want to stay here this evening, and uh, if and when we uh, if we don't conclude this evening, when we want to come back, what are council's thoughts on that? I I can stay as long as um, I'm required to be on it. And I don't want to sound like I'm a glutton for punishment, Your Honor, but I think our direct exam will have two witnesses. Um, we've got to have, have some documents, uh, the foundation laid for their admission that we're not stipulated to with Ms. Tyson, and then we have, I would hope, no more than a 15, 20-minute direct examination of Dr. Elgard. I'm imagining that there'll be a lengthy cross. I do not anticipate my cross of Dr. Walker taking more than 20 minutes. I would I'm like to, to stay till the end, if, if that's your honor. I would like to stay as late as we can this evening. Um, strike while the iron is I'd like to release counsel for advanced ed and uh, ask you, sir, uh, as an officer of the court, to uh, perform due diligence on that response on the request response to the request. And um, let's plan on a telephone conference. Um, Friday, would that work for all, all of you? Yes. And give yes, you sir. a full a full day away from here at the office to to uh, deal with that issue. We'll leave the record open regardless of when we finish this evening uh, for this issue. But I want to cut you loose. You've been here long enough. And uh, well, unfortunately, Dr. Elgar and I rode down together. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I would I would ask the court one other thing. Uh, tonight is my folks' 50th anniversary. Oh, Lord. I'm supposed to be in Alfred at seven o'clock. So if there's any way. We can get Dr. Elgar to, to testify and off the stand by 6 I think that's a reasonable that, that request. That would be really great tonight. That may, may be some divine intervention in our uh, uh, dilemma here. I appreciate that. We'll, we'll wrap up at 6, and then uh, let's, let's shoot for a 6 o'clock wrap-up this evening. Uh, that's something that I think warrants uh, recessing for. And then we'll uh, see where we are at 6 p.m. If we leave at 6, would that? That would be perfect. Okay. Thank you for telling us that. I appreciate that. Okay. I was trying to yeah, well, no, you do your job. I'm <laughs> okay, just trying to get all the facts in front um, of me. But if we could have like five minutes just to check that binder, some of the documents. Let's come back in at uh, 445. Okay. All right?